Hey everyone, it's Caitlin and welcome to another video. I'm in a different setup today because I'm on vacation, but I'm still giving you guys a video today. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make three different fall or winter themed desserts. These would be perfect for American Thanksgiving or Christmas, or if you just want to make a dessert to share with your friends and family. I'm going to be showing you how to make some sweet potato pie bars, a salted caramel apple tart, and a vegan pecan pie. So without further ado, let's get into the recipes. First up, we're going to be making some sweet potato pie bars. I love these bars. They're full of yummy fall flavors and they're also great for parties because it's easier to pick them up and eat them. So to start out, we're going to be steaming some whole sweet potatoes. You need about two medium sweet potatoes for this recipe. You're going to peel them and finely dice them and then place them in a steamer or just a pot full of water with a colander on top. And you're going to steam them for about 15 or so minutes or until they become fork tender. But while the sweet potatoes are steaming, we can go ahead and work on our crust. So you're going to add some pecans and some rolled oats to a food processor and then blend these until they become a fine flour. And I decided to use pecans for this recipe because they have a really nice buttery and crunchy flavor. So it does make the crust seem more like a traditional crust without using all the flour and oil and other ingredients. So after we have our flour, we're going to add in a thickened flax egg to give this some moisture as well as some salt. And then just blend everything together until it is well incorporated and nice and moist. So then we're going to remove this from the food processor and align a nine by nine tray with parchment paper. You do want to line it, don't grease it. Otherwise the bars are going to be difficult to remove and slice neatly. Uh, but then just place the pie crust into the bottom of the tray and you can use a spatula, but I found that it was just easier to my hands to press everything out into a nice, even and thick layer. So then we're just going to set this aside while our potatoes finish steaming. And then once the sweet potatoes have finished steaming, you're just going to rinse that same food processor out a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfectly clean. I just kind of wiped it. It's no big deal. It's all going into the same recipe anyways, but you're going to add your steamed sweet potatoes to the food processor. Just be careful because they will be a little bit hot. And then just seal that up and blend everything together until you get a nice and thick sweet potato puree. It doesn't have to be perfectly smooth at this point. It's okay if there are a few chunks because we're going to be blending it again once we add the rest of our ingredients, which includes some maple syrup for sweetness, a little bit of plant-based milk just to thin things out, some pumpkin pie spice, some vanilla extract, arrowroot powder to thicken things up, and a pinch of salt. And then again, just pop the lid back on the food processor and process this until it is smooth and creamy. You may have to scrape the sides down a bit, uh, depending on how well your food processor works, but this is what it looks like when it is done. So now we are going to pour this over our pecan and oat buttery base, and then just spread everything out evenly with a spatula so you get a nice, even layer of sweet potato bite. You do want to spread it out as thinly and evenly as possible because the pattern on the top will show up in the final product of the bars. So if you're anal like me, just try to make sure it's neat. After the sweet potato bars bake, you're just going to let them cool for a little bit and then you can slice them with a knife into however many sizes, shapes you would like. Um, I decided to do 12 bars here, just so they'd be nice and cute and dainty and perfect for a little sweet treat at a party. But if you wanted a really nice and hearty dessert, you could just go with nine. Do whatever floats your boat, guys. I don't know why I'm talking so much about slicing bars, but as you can see, they come out looking nice and thick and delicious. You got that nice thick base and a really well spiced and subtly sweet sweet potato filling. I think they're perfect on their own. I do like to warm them up when I serve them, but if you want to get extra fancy, you could also top them with some vegan cocoa whip, uh, which is just coconut whipped cream and a pecan. And I think this really takes it to the top and makes everything look festive AF. And the best part about these is honestly, all the ingredients are so healthy. You could eat these for breakfast if you really freaking wanted to. I mean, maybe not the whipped cream, but whatever. Next up, we're going to be making a vegan pecan pie. I tested this recipe so many times. I'm so happy with it. So I'm excited to share it with you guys. To start out, we're going to be using my three ingredient pie crust recipe. I've shown you how to make this before. It's a base of almond flour, tapioca flour, or arrowroot powder, and some salt. Then you're just going to whisk this together until everything is nice and evenly incorporated. And then we're going to add in a thickened flour egg and kind of like the base for the sweet potato bars. This is just going to add some moisture and help bind the pie crust together. So you can start out with a spatula and then eventually you're going to use your hands to knead the dough. If you want to use a different pie crust recipe, you're not gluten free, you have other ingredients you want to use up instead, that's totally fine. This is just what I like to use for all of my pies and tarts. So once you have your dough, you're going to spread it out between two pieces of parchment paper just because it can get a little sticky. 
and then roll it out to the size roughly of the base of your pie tin. It works for a nine inch pie tin really well, but you could go a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller if you need to. So after that, you're going to peel one layer of the parchment paper off. And then you should actually just flip it onto your pie tin instead of doing what I did, uh, but it doesn't matter. You can do whatever you want, I guess. And then just evenly spread out the dough. You can rip it a little bit on the sides and transfer it to another spot if the dough isn't completely even in all areas. And then you're going to take a fork, poke a few holes in it and pop it in the freezer for 20 minutes to cool off and help some of the fat solidify. And then after it's been 20 minutes, you're going to remove it, cover it with tin foil. I would suggest weighing it down with pie weights. I actually just didn't have any when I filmed this video. And then you're going to pop it in the oven and pre-bake it. And then while it's baking, we're going to work on the filling for our pecan pie. So we have a star secret ingredient for this filling, which is a roasted white sweet potato. I do recommend that you use a white sweet potato and I do absolutely recommend that you roast it because this gets as much moisture out as possible. And this is going to add extra volume and thickness to our pecan pie, which we really, really need. But the rest of the pecan pie ingredients are very simple. We just have some coconut sugar, as well as some full fat coconut milk. You do have to use full fat. I tested it with light, it doesn't work. We're also going to be using arrowroot powder to thicken things up. And I would recommend using arrowroot powder over cornstarch because it acts differently in the oven when you bake things. Then we're also going to add in that mashed white sweet potato. I have the full reasons why it's important in the blog post, but you just gotta use it, okay guys? We're also going to add in some vanilla extract and some salt, just a tiny pinch to this, and then blend everything up in your blender until it is smooth and creamy. Then you can go ahead and remove this and pour it into your pre-baked pie crust. In traditional pecan pies, you put the pecans at the bottom and they rise to the top while it bakes, but because we're not using eggs in this recipe, obviously, because I'm vegan, the filling itself has to be a little bit thicker. So we're just going to put the filling in first and then we spread it out with a spatula. And then we're actually going to sprinkle some extra coconut sugar on top. And this gives that grainy, like kind of caramelized sugar look to the pecan pie that traditional pecan pies have. And then after that is when we're going to add our pecans. I like a lot of pecans in my pie, so I'm using about a cup and a half of pecans. You can just sprinkle them evenly all over the top. I like using pecan halves. You could also use pecan pieces. They are a little bit less expensive, but you're just going to cover the top of your pie, lightly press them into the pie. Then you're gonna pop this baby into the oven. And this is what it's going to look like once it is finished. So you do want to let it cool a little bit before slicing. Honestly, you should probably let it cool completely just to allow the filling to thicken. But as you can see, we still got that traditional thick pecan pie flavor with our pecans on top. You can top it with some ice cream, make it super yummy and delicious. I'm really proud of this recipe considering the main ingredients are butter, sugar, and eggs. And I don't use any of those in my traditional recipes. And I think this came out pretty dang good anyways. So. I don't toot my horn a lot, but you know, I think you guys should try this recipe. And then last but not least, we're going to be making a salted caramel apple tart. So again, for this tart, we're going to use the same pie crust ingredients, so I'm not gonna show you how to make it again. I'm just using a tart pan for this recipe, though you could use it in a pie tin. It's the exact same process. You're just going to press your dough around into the pie tin and poke it with a fork. But this time we're not going to pre-bake the dough. We're just going to set it aside and we're going to work on the salted caramel sauce for our apple filling, which is also really easy. We're just going to add some coconut milk, coconut sugar, miso paste, cinnamon, and vanilla extract and some arrowroot powder. And then you're going to whisk everything together and just simmer it until the sauce gets nice and thick and bubbly. You do want to whisk it pretty constantly, otherwise things might stick to the bottom and you don't want any clumps of arrowroot powder. But then you're going to set this aside for now and then we're going to assemble our tart. So I decided to use Granny Smith apples for this recipe just because they are a little bit more tart and I don't like my desserts to be overly sweet. So you're going to need about three medium Granny Smith apples and just thinly slice them. And then in our bowl, we are going to add some lemon juice and the salted caramel sauce. And you're going to whisk this together first just to thin the salted caramel sauce out a bit. Then you're going to add your apples into the bowl and mix everything together until the apples get well coated. The caramel sauce might be thick at first and might be kind of hard to spread around the apples, but the more you keep stirring, then we have our pie crust and I actually baked this when I filmed this recipe, though we're not going to for the final recipe. I tested this again after I filmed it and it's better if you don't pre-bake the pie crust because then it might burn. Um, but you can arrange the apples in a fancy way like I'm doing here if you want, or you can just plop everything in either way. Just go ahead and top it off with the rest of that salted caramel sauce. And you're going to bake this in the oven for 30 minutes. And then this is what it looks like. After the 30 minutes have passed, the caramel sauce gets nice and golden and the apples get nice and soft and tender. And I think the tart apples really complement the sweetness of the caramel sauce. I honestly prefer salty desserts over sweet desserts, so I really like this recipe. And I think it's a really great fall and winter recipe because you have those fresh apple flavors, but also apples are available 
available year round. So you could totally make this during any time of the year, but I think with the cinnamon in it too, it's just extra cozy for those chilly months. So once it's ready, you do want to let the pie sit for about 30 minutes after it bakes, just to let the salted caramel sauce thicken a little bit, otherwise it will run all over the pan. But you can put your slice of pie on a plate. Again, you could top it with ice cream if you wanted to, but I think it's perfectly delicious just on its own. Do whatever floats your boat. But either way, I hope you guys enjoy and I hope you make some of these recipes for your future vegan holiday gatherings. All right guys, and that is how you make those three delicious desserts. Leave a comment below telling me which one is your favorite or which one you want to make first. And as a friendly reminder, the full recipe links to will be linked below. That will lead you to my blog post, so you can go ahead and check those out. I'll also have my Pinterest page down there if you want to save them for a later date. Also leave a comment if you want, uh, telling me what your favorite dessert is. Maybe I can veganize it in the future. I am currently in Miami right now. I will be filming a vlog, so I'll be showing you guys that soon, but I hope you're having an awesome day, whatever time of day it is for you. Thanks for watching this video. You can like and subscribe if you feel so inclined, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.